It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I always wanted to live in the neighborhood with you, so. Hell no, you can't live in my neighborhood, y'all. <laughs> There's too many people here in Forney. So y'all know how we do this. This is another chit chat video. I got stuff all over the place. I'm discombobulated. That's probably not how you pronounce it, but we're gonna say it anyway. Um. This video, I'm going to be doing a pre-shampoo using African Pride Moisture Miracle Detangle and Condition Pre-Shampoo, the aloe and coconut water. I have a video on this. Some of y'all have a hate-love relationship with this product. You do you, baby, but I like this product. I really do. So, my hair has been in this style. I'm giving you, um, oh, little Richard. Oh, bless his heart. So, that's why I'm serving you with this hair, right? I tried to look at that, speaking of, and we'll talk about it, you guys. I tried to look at that documentary that started Leon. Child, I, could, I couldn't get into it, but it looked pretty good. So, you guys, this is a chit-chat video. I'm going to be detangling my hair. She is well overdue. Don't ask me when last time I have washed my hair, but I am trying to do this now on a weekly basis and get back into the habit of doing my hair. So y'all know how we do this. We talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV, okay? Let's try to get this hair down. I gotta make sure that I am watching the clock because I'm going to go pick up JB from school. Ooh, so what y'all up to, girl? Look, baby, JB woke up this morning coughing. And I'm like, look, I'm one of those moms that's like, what what do you what, what's going on? <laughs> I'm like, what's wrong? What what's with your throat? Like, are you okay? What are your symptoms? I start getting medicines and piling it all up. It's his asthma. Um, JB has asthma, and I know for the last couple of days my asthma has been has been a little bit flared. So um, I put him on the nebulizer and I feel so bad for my baby. He started shaking and that's what steroids can do to you. And so I was like, take a couple of deep breaths. He's like, I'm not shaking on purpose. I said, I know you're not baby. It's the medication. It typically will make you shake. Um, I had him to pack his inhaler and I sent his teacher a message and said, Hey, you know, these are him symptoms. He don't have COVID. Keep, keep his ass there. Just let me know that he's just not feeling well. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on with, with him. Everything else is good. I've been having a roller coaster of a, of a day. Oh girl, that's cute. You see that girl? I've been having a roller coaster of a day because the private school that he said that he that he's in, although I I really do like this private school and I like they, that they do a lot of one on one. They do not provide special education. I spoke with a woman earlier today. I spoke with her for a fairly long time, and I really do appreciate her. As a parent, I'm having to go outside of the school to find resources. So yeah, that's going on. So child, let me tell you about real quick. Who do I have it on my list? Oh. Y'all, you know, y'all don't sit up here and shut down Biden's website. <laughs> uh, President Joe Biden announced yesterday about the student loan forgiveness. He's going to extend it to December, no, to January 2023. He's going to give those of us that have make up under a certain dollar amount and family and marriage household under a certain dollar amount. I've been trying. The only reason why I'm trying is because I'm trying to get my... Uh, loans from my master program from WIU, which was a for-profit school that we can now go out and have the, that debt canceled. And so I've been, I should have done it. It's not, it's not, it's not y'all fault, but it is. I should have done this months ago when I saw the notification. And so that's what I've been trying to do. I don't care to see if, whether or not I qualify because I know I do, but Child, I've been trying for a good two days. And I'm like, you know what? I'll come back at the end of September. It'll still be there. But by the way, if you have gone to a school, none for, none for profit, oh no, a for profit, girl, for profit college, make sure that you fill out this, um, that forgiveness application because that process is going to say, look, I know they are done. So child, look, I'm going to tell y'all about, um, <laughs> Uh, just to give y'all some some insight on me and my family my family well let me back up I graduated from high school fairly fairly
little young, I guess. I'm a you I'm a year younger than my classmates. So I graduated from high school um when I was 17 and then immediately went to college. Oh baby, I was not playing. I immediately went to college when I was only 17. What's the point, girl? So I've been away from East Texas since I was 17. I guess what I'm trying to say is that my family really doesn't know the adult Vivian. That's just, a, that's just is what it is. I mean, I'm 42 years old. My family is super conservative. We don't curse in front of each other. Um, we don't even say like the itty bitty curse words like hell. You can't say hell. Um, that's like asses to me is a, is a bad one. Hell is, is you know. And so, even when I say, y'all know me because I'm country, I say, what in the same hell? I remember saying that once in front of my parents. And my sister was like, Viv, why are you cursing? And I was like, what the hell did I say? She's like, Viv. <laughs> so, there was a guy there that was at the hotel. My mother had this event at a hotel. And everybody knows everybody in East Texas. They just do. And so, when I walked in, my hair, first of all, my hair was in this, um... I had blown my hair out and how did I have the back? I'm trying to remember. Oh, I had the side kind of like this, but then the, the, this side was in this waterfall, almost like Janet Jackson, 1987 serving you. You know what I mean? But it was down here. It was beautiful. It was nice. I had no, just a simple shirt or whatever, a simple outfit, nothing too good, but my face was beat. So I'm going in there and I'm saying hi to everyone. I see my aunt there and I see people that I know. Um, and then I noticed this guy walking around. He kind of looked at me and he was like, oh, and he turned around. I'm like, oh, okay. And I looked at him from head to toe. I'm like, it's okay. He's a little sugary. He looks a little sugary, which is fine. I love the kids. And I'm like, oh, he's a little sugary. I ain't got to worry about him. But this is the thing. A lot of Southern men, and those of you, if you're from the South, you know what I'm talking about. A lot of Southern men actually don't be that way. They're not gay. They just come across as that. I don't know what it is. You know who's like that? Y'all know that cooking show, Cooking with the Neelys? Her husband comes off like that. And I'm trying to think of someone like that. Gina and Pat. Is his name Pat? Her husband comes off a little sugary like, but he's not. Anyway, y'all. He comes off like that. He even has a little nickname. I forgot his nickname, but I kept calling him Peaches. So that's what we're going to call him. Peaches, right? So Peaches is what... <laughs> Peaches works at the hotel, right? And at one point, I was back doing the snack section, getting in, um, getting my uh, nephew and niece something and JB, because we're also staying at the hotel, because I'm not trying to drive back to Forney after being around and, and eating these dang cakes for a good six or seven hours. No, ma'am. So he comes around. I'm talking to my sister. He comes around. And my sister, says, she's like, oh, he wants to know if he could touch your hair. And I stop. And I'm like, and he's like, uh, yeah, you know, I know it, it seems kind of creepy, but I was wanting to know if I could touch your hair. And I was like, I'm looking and I'm like, because it's been a while since someone, first of all, a man has never asked that. They will typically compliment. It's typically women that have asked to touch my hair. And I said, um, and my sister's like, you know who this is? This is Peaches. He's like, yeah, hey, I'm Peaches. And, uh, you know, my, my, uh, wife went to high school with you. I'm like, okay, I still don't know who the hell you are. So... I'm telling y'all, I'm, I'm up front. I said, you know what? He said, you have beautiful hair. Is that all your hair? I said, yes, it's all my hair. My sister's like, yes, it's all her hair. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, this is all my hair. He said, oh, your hair is beautiful. No, I'm really thinking he's sugary, right? Again, nothing wrong with that. I love the kids. So he's like, I, I don't know if I could touch your hair. I said, um, th look, this is the thing, Peaches. Peaches, it is. I don't know you, baby. I don't know you. And I'm very careful about energy. And people transferring energy to me. I don't know you like that. So, unfortunately, you can't touch my hair. And, and for a second, he was like, dang. But, you know, on top of that, he's like, you know, I saw you coming in. And, you know, the way you looked, I, I got intimidated. I'm like, oh, my God. Please don't start. So, girl, so that happened. Now, we're going to get to the part with the church, the church members, right? So, he was low-key throwing. Uh, he's been a little, he's a little sugary, but he's also flirtatious. And he's married, okay? And he's older. I ain't gonna say his age, but he's older. Too old to be acting like this, basically. And so, when I meet people, if I don't know you, I'm not like that because I don't know you. I don't care if I went to school with your wife, your sister, your mama. I, I'm, You know, I'm just like that. I don't know you. 
and I'm married and you're married, so stop. But he was like that with everybody, child. It, it's not like me. He was like that with everybody. Just anyway, so there was a point where I guess my big butt rubbed up against the um cake stand and I got some a little bit of cake on my on my bottom and my aunt Sheila hey aunt Sheila she doesn't want my channel but my aunt Sheila was like hey Viv I'm Viv hey Viv it looks like you got some cake on you on your butt and I was like what and she said it look like you got some cake on you this is peaches oh um I'll get it for you I have look he was behind me and hey, y'all, I'm slick with my tongue. Before I could even stop myself, I turned around and said, if you don't sit your fluffy ass down, and they started laughing. Some of them were shocked and stopped because these... <laughs> I said this in front of everybody who had... I think the youngest person there, besides me and my sister and the kids, the youngest person there was like 56. So these people were seasoned. And they all change members. They on the usher board, or some of them were. So my sister was like, Viv, you just... <laughs> She said, Viv, you just cursing for the church members. I said, what? What did I say? She said, you said fluffy. I said, I did. Y'all, I felt so embarrassed. My mama was laughing low key. I Look, I approached everyone and, and apologized. But they're like, it's okay. You okay? You're grown. But I, I apologized. My aunt on the side, she said, oh, Viv, I guess we're going to have a prayer service for you later on. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a prayer service for you later on. I went over to another woman. I said, I'm so sorry. She said, You okay, baby? She said, Honestly, I, I would have said more than that. <laughs> but that's just the type of um, atmosphere it is, and you just don't do that. And I know there are some people that do curse and use, you know, foul language in front of their parents. We don't do that. It doesn't matter if we're grown, it's just out of respect for them. So even though I even just saying ass that's a curse you don't say that out of respect so that's what that's a little bit story time of what's going on with my personal life you guys so okay so what i'm watching on youtube are any any of y'all like me do any y'all be looking at look i'm gonna be honest do any of you guys be looking at some of these youtubers they're doing stuff around their house they have stuff put up and they're showing their house and you know they're on youtube you're not sure if they work do any of you guys be wondering where the hell are they getting this money from how are you getting this money uh, and i'm because i'm nosy like that i don't really care about how much you're making because that's none of my business but i'm like where are you getting all this money at so someone who i saw she's been doing a, a renovation on her home and I think she's from the islands and she lives in Miami of all expensive ass places. Minnie Morley. I like her. Now, I don't really watch some of her. I stopped watching her a lot, which honestly, I don't even watch a lot of natural YouTubers. But she's doing renovations on her house. She has a beautiful house. But then a part of me is thinking, what the heck? Like, where do you work? And I mean... <laughs> to be to be able to afford a house like that and the renovations renovations are not cheap you guys because when we did our um house we set just affordable we spent a good twenty five thousand dollars renovating our house and we didn't even do everything we wanted to do and she did a lot i mean talking about gutting out the cabinets doing stuff some of it i'm like that is beautiful some of it's not my taste that's okay it doesn't have to be my taste overall i like the entire atmosphere of her house who's another one i'd be wondering where the heck are you getting your i am sharika b she's in Flo she's in florida too florida is not cheap she's down there in florida too she does a lot of um i like her videos i like her style because she's older she does a lot of you know um self self me you know what am i trying she does a lot of self-care videos a little bit of going out to eat hanging out with her friends but she's also one that's let me go to the gucci store and get some stuff and i'm like what the heck i just a part of me even if i had that type of money to spend around you know and I'm not broke. Y'all know that. Y'all see you. <laughs> it's a $10,000 chair back there. I'm not broke by any means. But I just don't have the extra money to be spending on stuff like that. And I feel like it, even if I did, I wouldn't. Because, baby, even when I had a little extra money. And when I mean extra, by an extra $500, $400, $500 a month. I was taking my ass to Charmin Charlie and getting that $30 purse. <laughs> um, so I was back and looking at some of her videos. Also was looking at... Um, all you guys those of you know i am a diehard fan of keeping up appearances and it's something i've been watching for a very long time it helps me to follow see now i was watching 
Rhonda, aka Mr. Life of videos. I'm about to text her and say, you need to start making videos because I need something to um, sleep to. So selfish. But keeping up appearances, earlier this week, the actress that plays Elizabeth, she passed away, you guys. Let me find up. Girl, keeping up the Kardashian. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. So let me look up her name because I just don't want to call her Elizabeth because she has, she played in some other roles. So Josephine Tucson. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her name correctly. I'm going to put my hair back, you guys. Done doing that. She passed away peacefully at home at the age of 91, which is a blessing. Now, Clive Swift, who, paid, who played um, Hudson's husband, he passed away in 2019. And so there's only three characters from that show, besides the ones that are a little bit older, there's only three from that show that are still alive. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's pretty sad, but they're getting older and it's a blessing to still be that, be living that long, honestly, you know what I mean? So yeah. All right, you guys, what I'm watching on TV, girl, y'all saw that picture I posted of Orphan 2 first kill when i tell you this show movie had so many i was going up and down up and down so i absolutely love that they had the um actress that played the dwarf killer <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't say that i should <laughs> I, okay give me don't say that let me look up her name don't, don't say that because i'm there may be little people watching this so i can't i'm i do apologize y'all so the actress at the time, when she played in the original movie Orphan, she was actually 12 years old. Y'all, I thought that it was at least like a 15, 16, not that it makes it okay, but I thought perhaps that the actress was older, but she wasn't. Her name is Isabel For Foreman. She was 12 years old in that original movie. And those of you who've seen the original movie, there wasn't there a scene where she was trying to come on to the father? How uncomfortable. You know what? These freaking movie producers and directors are, are evil as hell. There is no way I would have allowed my underage daughter to be in a freaking scene like that. Granted, it wasn't... They weren't making out... She did something like she either touched him in a way. No, she gave him a kiss, a little kiss on the cheek. But because the underlying message was, I'm going to try to come on to you. Yeah. So overall, if you haven't seen Orphan, I'm going to spoil it for you. So it's basically a child. No, no. It's an adult playing a child, playing a child, a psycho killer dwarf adult that plays a child and she plays a child that's roughly like nine or ten years old she ends up killing everyone that's an orphan really but look the spoiler was big because i'm thinking okay she, she's demonic she's possessed she has multiple personality disorder but when the middle towards the end of the movie when she starts she takes off that makeup and everything and then she takes off these teeth she got all yellow teeth and caps and shit and then she she unbandages her titties because she i'm sorry she unbandages her breasts because she's she's really like 31 years old right and she's like then she starts to get dressed and she's now she's in her she's she's a little midget woman and she goes downstairs and she starts talking to the father and i'm like oh my god so orphan to first kill is a pre-kill pre movie i don't know how to pronounce it of this girl of this of this killer and so i'm thinking oh you know what we already know <laughs> we already know esther's on it we already know what's gonna happen so it starts um save the last dance girl jessica styles that's her name no julia styles so it starts off spoiler with esther in a mental institution i'm thinking oh my god here she go we go in a mental institution and she manipulates her way to get out of the of the mental institution she starts looking up american children that have disappeared and she she decides to see how which which one she looks she favors the most right how in the hell you go from connecticut to russia I don't know, but Esther did it. So she's on the playground. A police officer's like, what are you doing, little girl? She's like, I, I don't know my name, whatever. So, yeah, I'm all over the place. She gives her name, figures out, calls the parents. This is the Russian cops, calls the parents. The parents fly over to get her. 
And so all this time, we know who Esther is because we've seen part one. We know she just uh, a midget walking around pretending that she's nine years old, right? So she gets into her room. She sees all this stuff. Now, Esther does self-harm or she tries to get out of her re restraints when she was in the mental institution. So her neck has a circle around it and then her wrist has a um, trigger warning from trying to commit suicide so she wears long clothes stuff she wears a choker she basically dresses like she got a 1910 from europe which she pays she basically is <laughs> so anyway y'all the story goes on and on there's a lot of twists and turns she meets this father and the father is an artist and and the character esther already knows how to draw and so there's one scene where the father is drawing and he does this, I guess it's almost like, is it black light? I don't know the actual type of light it is, but when, you, he, when he turns off the light, another picture appears. When he turns it on, it goes back to her original photo. This still goes back to the first movie where that father went in there. Either the father or the mother went into her room and she was painting all this stuff. Well, the lights were turned off and you can see the true paintings. It, it looked a hot ass mess. Esther was going crazy, but when you turn the paint, the light on, it's all happy. You got dolls and shit, Care Bears. It looks normal, right? Mm -mm. So this is where she learned how to paint that particular type of method of painting. Is basically what I'm trying to say. So, girl, there's a son in this one. He's like a teenager, and at one point the son was having a party. There's a cop. An Asian older cop that is very suspicious of Esther and also Esther's um her the psychiatrist is a bit suspicious of her too so she's like trying to tune in trying to figure what's going on okay what do I gotta do do I gotta kill someone so this particular cop comes over to the house when the parents are out and Esther's going around her her brother and I say that loosely her brother's outside with his friends are drinking and she's like, I want to join y'all. I, I may look nine, but I'm really 29. And, you know, Esther's brother's like, if you don't get your ass out of here, you need <laughs> you need to go. You're just a child, right? Esther's like, you know, F it, bye. She sees the detective going around. The detective has taken her record that has a print on it. I already know what's going to happen. He's going to use that print to try to figure out who this hussy is. He does all of that. He's fixing himself a drink back at home. And he takes um tape. He, um figures out that this is not who this child is. I don't know who the hell this is. So he literally says that, who are you? Child, all of a sudden, Esther is behind him, stabbing him. He falls down to the ground. You know, Esther got the got the knife, she gets up, and then you hear gunshot cut over to this Save the Last Dance hussy. She, I'm like, girl, <laughs> I thought you would I thought you were doing the robot when you were dancing and now you up here killing people so she has a gun and she could she figures out child when I tell you the twists and turns of this movie come to find out the son the teenager had killed Esther a long time ago